Hi everyone! Welcome to my first animated video and also my first ever explaining video. Today I choose to tell you about RNA interference, what it is, how it works and what possibilities it widens up. The concept is pretty recent. Scientists Andrew Fire and Craig Mello won the Nobel Prize in Medicine 2006 for the discovery of RNA interference in plants and worms. Later, it was found in other eukaryotic organisms. Their work had an immense impact in biomedical research. But before proceeding to this mechanism, it's crucial to make sure you understand the gene expression process, the way each gene expresses itself through protein synthesis. Let's make some review on this topic. By now, you all heard about deoxyribonucleic acid, the famous DNA, and you also know that this molecule is a double-stranded long chain of nucleotides and that there are four types of nucleotides, depending on their nitrogenous base. It can be thymine, cytosine, adenine and guanine. These bases bond to each other, pairing up always in the same way. Thymine always pairs up with adenine, and cytosine pairs up with guanine. So, given one strand of DNA, we can figure out its complementary strand, pairing up the bases. This is the secret ability that allows DNA to copy itself so efficiently. Ribonucleic acid, the RNA, is the other nucleic acid existent in living organisms. It's a kind of younger brother to DNA, with a very similar chemical composition, but less stable, and just one stranded. As in DNA, there are four types of nucleotides, and they are just the same, with one exception. Instead of thymine, RNA has uracil. Just like letters in our words, the different types of nucleotides can be rearranged to form different sequences. Some of these bits of DNA, the genes, contain the information to produce specific proteins, and when they are produced, the gene is being expressed. As you know, the basic unit of proteins is the amino acids, while in DNA it is the nucleotides. It's as if DNA spoke Chinese and proteins French. Their language is not the same, not even the alphabet. So, it needs to be translated. There is also another problem. DNA is located in the nucleus and the proteins are synthesized in cell organelles in the cytoplasm, the ribosomes. That's where the RNA comes in. It acts as an errand boy, carrying the instructions from the nucleus to the ribosomes and then helps to translate it. So, for the gene to be expressed, two phases are necessary. First, the transcription, when a segment of DNA is copied into RNA. As you can see, only the upper strand of DNA is being copied, and uracil is replacing thymine in the RNA strand. The result is a type of RNA that we call messenger RNA, mRNA for short. After the transcription, it travels to the cytoplasm, where phase 2 takes place. It's like a boss handing in a message to an errand boy who has to take it to another department of the company. The second phase is the translation, in the ribosomes, when the information carried by the mRNA is used to create the proteins. This information is stored in groups of three nucleotides, the cadans, and each of these corresponds to a specific amino acid. That's really like a code, the genetic code. So, when the mRNA strand passes through the ribosome, another type of RNA, the transfer RNA, breaks the code, adding the right amino acid to the sequence that will then mature and become the protein we wanted. In this example, the boy delivers the message to its recipient, who reads it and turns the word in the message into the actions the boss demanded. Now, I hope that the gene expression basics are clear. Once you have understood this, it will be easy for you to figure out the mechanism of RNA interference that is, in fact, very simple. Basically, 
it consists in blocking gene expression or silencing the gene by promoting the degradation of the messenger RNA. To do this, organisms use small pieces of RNA complementary to the specific sequences of messenger RNA, the short interfering RNA, or SI for short. This SI RNA is incorporated in a protein complex called RNAi induced silencing complex, commonly referred to as RISC. It seeks for the target nucleotides in the messenger RNA and binds to them by base pairing. Then, it cuts the mRNA, making it useless. As there is no space for useless things inside the cells, those pieces are degraded and eliminated. With no mRNA, there is going to be no translation and the protein is not going to be produced. In our previous example, Risk could be a gang of bullies from the boys class who chase him to steal and destroy the message, so that the instructions it contains cannot be completed. This mechanism acts as a defense weapon against viral infections. As some type of viruses attack organisms by injecting their genetic material on their cells, giving the wrong instructions, siRNA can be used to eliminate these instructions. It's also important to regulate gene expression. These are examples of how RNA interference happens in nature, but one of the greatest implications of this discovery is in the field of biomedical research. Its targeted action can be used to study the functions of essentially any gene. Researchers only have to introduce in the cell pieces of RNA matching the mRNA that corresponds to the genes they want to study, and then they can watch and record the effects. In this example, we could conclude that the gene we blocked is responsible for that nice pink color. It is also possible that, in the future, some new medical therapies based in this concept will appear. Some diseases related to malfunction in genes could potentially be treated by gene silencing. Who knows? Maybe you'll be the one completing the work of so many scientists and discovering a new treatment that will save many lives. What are you waiting for?